Hello everybody, my name is DJ, Radio Jamming, and today I'm going to be doing Drunk History on behalf of Shannon, aka the Ice and Bones. For her sake I got drunk, and I'm going to be talking about the Franklin Expedition, and helping me today is a little hard no. It's going to be fun. So, essentially what the Franklin Expedition was, was in 1845, some guys from England set off to go find the Northwest Passage. And the Northwest Passage <coughs> was supposed to lead between England and that place, Asia. There we go. And people have been trying to find it for like 300 years or more. At least since Elizabethan times. So they kept sending people to go find it and it just wasn't working. They'd get frozen in certain spots, which would just be really bad. So, finally, in 1845, um, Sir John Barrows, this old fucker from the Admiralty, was getting ready to retire, and he says, we really need to find this place because I'm getting ready to retire, and um, this would look really, really good in my eulogy because I'm old, and one day I'm going to die. So, he sets up this expedition and he's trying to think of different captains and they're like well let's get sir james ross but he's like i mean he'd been to the antarctic and he knew how to do stuff with ice so they ask him he's like no dude i just got married like my wife doesn't want me to do this because he's a good guy and they're like okay so they want james fitzjames who sir john barrow was like he got my son out of trouble and they're like dude he's like 32 like He's doing keg stands. We can't have that. So then he's like, Francis Ron Moira Crozier. And they're like, he's too Irish. We can't do that either. And he's like, okay. Sir John Franklin, who's been like clawing at the door. And is like, I want to be doing this so bad. And he tried it before. Like he did. And it didn't really work. I mean, he did like overland expeditions. And he ended up being known as the man who ate his own boots. Because people starved and died and cannibalism happened and that's going to be a theme in the franklin expedition so i to drink water this came out really fast so anyway um i mean okay so the franklin expedition is like the space shuttle of its time they were like we're gonna put every awesome technology on this and the only thing was they were like we're going to put all these awesome technologies on, but it's going to be in, like, five months. So you guys better get ready, like, yesterday. So, like, we're going to put a locomotive engine on it from Croydon, and it's going to be so cool. And there's this hot spanking new thing called canned food, dude. It's going to be so cool. Like, you guys are going to eat, like, kings for months and months and months in the Arctic. And they have, like, a library and music, like, an organ that plays a gajillion songs. It's going to be rad, dude. So all these guys are like, sweet, man. Like, they outfitted these two ships that had already been to the Antarctic with Ross, um, with Terra and the Erebus. Like, these are going to be so cool. So they get a bunch of guys to go on this thing. They leave in May of 1845 with Sir John Franklin commanding. And he was, like, working off an embarrassment for being the governor of Van Diemen's Land, which is Tasmania. And his wife was like, bitch, you need to get back on this boat. Like, we're so embarrassed all the time. You need to, like, get us a win for the Franklin family. Hurrah. And Franklin's like, yeah, Janie, it'll be cool. So he hops on. He looks all fancy in his daguerreotype. He doesn't really. He had the flu when he had his picture taken. So he's like, oh, hi. And then Fitzjames is like, hi, babe. It's really great. So they get on the boats, ships. And they hop on up to Greenland and they're so confident they're like this is gonna be great like we practically have this thing mapped and really by that point like they kind of figure the Northwest Passage isn't feasible they know that but like the English were like allergic to empty spots on the map and also like if you ever want to look up why did the English want the Northwest Passage so bad just look up English colonialist history if you want to hate everything about England no big deal so, they go up there, and they're like, it's going to be fine. We're going to be in Hawaii before you know it, Sandwich Island. They're like, we'll be in Hawaii before you know it. You're going to all be getting, like, suntans and drinking out of coconuts by next year. It'll be so cool. Like, they're pretty confident. No, it's like a weird noise outside. Okay. So, they go, 
and they head up on Greenland, and they're sending letters back, and Fitzjames is like, bitch, I'm stranded on a ship with all these people. I'm gonna write really funny notes about everybody except Crozier. It's grumpy and Irish. And Crozier's like, writes back to James Ross, who's pretty much his boyfriend, and is like, dear James, please come back to me. I miss you so much. I didn't mean anything I said. Whatever. His, his letters are interesting. So everybody's writing their letters back and they send a couple people back and they're like, all right, on in the Northwest Passage, we're going to get this done. We'll send you letters back from Hawaii. Doodaloo. So they go to past Greenland and a bunch of whalers are like, bye, bon voyage. Have a good time. Have a great vacation. Miss Frizzle's off on her field trip. And they go and they're never seen again. Brad. Okay. Not true. Everybody says that. Ever seen one of those whale fish islands? Ever seen it again? Bitch. There were people who saw them, and it was great. It wasn't great. Um, so, anyway, they go missing for a bunch of years, and finally the Admiralty is like, maybe we should look into these guys. Some things happened. So, they go, they keep sending expeditions up and up and up and up, and they kind of put together from the Inuit populations who had seen them and were like, white dudes are dumb like they just walked off and died and were like eating each other man they're like that's crazy what are you talking about but the first thing they find is this place called beachy island in south of devon island they check that out and they're like oh my god there are dead people on this island there's three graves, three graves. Uh -oh. um I've, oh my god Whoa. this is great this is good times they find some people it's really bad Oh my god. Um, and they're like, oh shoot, dude, like, something's wrong with Franklin's expedition. Oh, please don't mind my weeaboo shit. Oh no, that was when I was like 16. Oh god. So, I find these graves and they're like, oh man, it's really bad. And one of the graves has a verse in the Bible that's like, the say of the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. It belongs to him, by the way. It's John Arnold. Um, and he died the 4th of January, 1846, and the first one who got dead <laughs> oh god dead it was john torrington who died on new year's happy new year's and they hadn't even been gone like a full year they'd only been gone a few months man so they're like oh my god is there mutiny like what's going on is everyone dying something really bad's happened it's really <laughs> horrible for the franklin people and so they send back news and they're like uh shit man this is bad <laughs> Something terrible has happened. The Admiralty is like, bitch, please. No, it couldn't have been. We were so thorough and full of money. <laughs> and anyway, they keep looking. And this dude named John Ray goes up. Is it John Ray? I think it's John Ray. I'm so tired. I'm so drunk. <laughs> it's a great night, guys. So he sends back a note. He's like, shit, man. I talked to this guy named Ulibuck. And he's like, dude, they're eating each other. Like, they were snacking on the dudes. They were making, like, chicken Mc Englishman. And he doesn't mean for his letter to get back to England as, like, news in fact. And my cat's scratching at the door. Oh, my God. Please. Oh, shut up, cat. He, he doesn't mean for it to hit the news. But, of course, England is obsessed with bad news. So they're like, yeah, publish it. And he's like, they have gone to the last resource. That's eating dudes. And Lady Jane, Franklin's wife, is like, oh my god, that's impossible. Englishmen don't eat Englishmen. That's stupid. So she gets all in a tizzy. And who does she call? But Charles goddamn Dickens, like, goes to Christmas fuck you, is like... Oh my god, the Inuit are terrible people, and they eat blubber, and they're dumb, and can't be right. So he publishes this whole thing, and the Victorians are like, oh, what? Like, on their fainting couches, like, it's impossible, English people don't snack on dudes. So, there's also this thing, the Victory Point record, which is found in a cairn, and it pretty much says, um, like, blah blah blah, we're at this position, everything's fine, Franklin's in command what is and it ends with oh well i got a tattoo of that um in fitz james's handwriting and then they're like oh it was fine and then like around the edges of it was like a note added later it's like it's not all well we're dying there's a bunch of those like nine officers are dead and 50 men and franklin's dead and he died in 1847 it's really bad so the admiralty's like oh my god this sucks so anyway that's all fine and good no it's not it was really bad it's not fine when people eat each other. 
Um, and they lost two ships. The two ships, they have no idea where they went. And they consulted the Inuit. And they're like, but they fell over and they sank. And there's this place where the boat sank. And they're like, it's dumb. There's no boat sinking place. We don't believe you were English. Because that's like the motto of England is we don't believe you were English. <laughs> oh my god. So, um... Anyway, this becomes like a national obsession. It becomes like the most expensive and extensive search for men. A bunch of people do it. It becomes very popular to do this thing. And lots of legends come out of it. It's cool. And then people get obsessed with it and then they stop being obsessed with it. And then they get obsessed with it again. And finally, like people like me who is in drunken in bed and Franklin tattoo and a tiny doll of a mummy. Oh my god. This is great. I love it today. Um they're you know, they're always wondering what happened. Out of all of these 129 dudes run off into the Arctic and are like, We were so good at this, man, like no big deal. We can handle this for English and then they all die. So there's talk. You know, they're like mutiny. Scurvy. Scurvy's usually the go-to. Like, English sailors die of scurvy, I guess. So finally, in 1984, Dr. Owen Beattie's this dude who works at the University of Alberta, and he's like, I have a theory. But I can only prove my theory if I go up into the Arctic and dig up some dead bodies. Because that's how scientists like to prove theories, is by digging up dead bodies. And when I went to the Franklin Symposium, they called this book, Frozen Time, they called it The Gateway Drug. Franklin dudes so he digs up John Torrington who's the first dude to die and he's like I want to know how this guy died and I think modern 1980 science can tell me some things about stuff he digs up John Torrington oh my god he looks amazing for a dead man who's been dead since time I don't know how many years I'm a history major I don't know how to do math he's dead and he's covered in stuff ropes and his jaws tied up like Jacob Marley has <laughs> Charles Dickens. <laughs> I made a connection. Um, he's all like hot and stuff, I guess. At least Shana Pugh, I think that's how you say her name. And Margaret Atwood are like, what a foxy man you got there. <laughs> Owen Beatty. And they're like, he's so well preserved. He's like, looking back at us and stuff. So they're like, let's check him out. And they're like, oh my God, this man's got a shitload of lead in his dead body. And we want to know why. We think something's going on. So it like hits the news in the 80s. And People Magazine's like, he's one of the most interesting personalities of 1984. Which is great, because they don't know him. And he died when he was like 20. So I said he was like, most likely to be loitering outside Sainsbury's. So then they dig up the fox in 1986. The man I'm totally in love with. That's John Hartnell. He's, oh my god. How does my phone work? There he is. They dig him up in 1986. Oh, I have Christina Gehrman's art. Look how pretty he is. He was like Mr. Darcy in the ice. He's a very handsome man. They dig him up in 1986 with his great nephew presiding. Whoa, that's dope. And they're like, oh my god, he's got so much light in his body too. That's so crazy. But somebody's already dug him up. That's crazier. So John Hart... John Hartnell... His poor hat. I'm so sorry, Tiny John. So, okay. John Hartnell tells them a lot. He does. And he's like, hey guys, listen. I have like no zinc in my body and a shitload of lead. And it's bad news bears up in here. But you know what's even crazier? I was already autopsied. I was autopsied on the Erebus by Henry Goodzer. Harry Goodzer. And a bunch of girls and people on Tumblr are going to love him later. It's going to be great. But here's the thing, man. I'm wearing my brother's shirt. So I am emotional. And you're going to love me for my hair. For my, wait. For my hair. I'm going to have a lot of it. See? I, he had a lot of hair. So they dig up William Brain. Poor William Brain. He's got his nose all smushed. He's a Marine. And nobody knows anything about him. And it's really sad. But anyway, a bunch of people had lead. 
in their dead bodies. And OMBD's like, I bet they died of the lead in the cans. And then a bunch of people spend the next gajillion years trying to prove them wrong. Because that's what academics do. And when someone's like, I think this happened. They're like, bitch, please, you're wrong. Why? Because I have a PhD in academia. And I feel really bad for William Brain. Because everybody was like paying attention to John Squared. And not him. Anyway, more stuff happened. And they still hadn't found the ships. As of the 80s. Crazy. So, in 2014, before that, they had been asking the Inuit. They're like, hey, Inuit, you guys are, like, so good at keeping records in oral tradition. Help? Like, do you know where these guys are? They're like, yeah, I think I do. So, finally, in 2014, I'm skipping over a lot. Read David Woodman's book. It's very good. Tells you the whole story. The room's doing strange things to me. He's like, I think I know where the Erebus is in the terror. And they're like, dope. Help us find it. So in 2014, they're like, scan, 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 scan. All these people who have been like Franklin nerds forever. And finally, they're like, oh my god. Oh no, wait. Before they do that, they're like, we're in the drama. We don't know if we're ever going to find it. We're spending a bunch of Parks Canada's money using this little thing that looks like an elongated Twinkie crossed with a paper airplane to try to find it for sight. Snow. Side scanning sonar is what that's called. Technology. To find boats. And they found the boat ship in 2014. They were like, what is it? And they send people down to dive. And they're like, Ooh, we found the Erebus. Cool. So in 2016, they find the Terror. And everyone's like, oh my god. We're going to finally figure out what happened. I don't think that's ever going to happen. But the thing is, like, they, they also found more dead bodies over time. Like, you have more people going out, like Charles Francis Hall, Shawatka, endless list of people. And they find bodies. They find more skeletons. They find the Pegler Papers, which they call... I don't remember what they call them. It's confusing stuff written backwards, and people are like, oh my god, is it lead poisoning? Um, like I said, people have spent forever trying to prove that wrong. Oh, you can see Sarge. That's Sarge. He's my... He's my buddy! <laughs> this is going so bad. Anyway, um... So they've been trying to spend, like, you know, the... Oh my god. I'm so bad at this. I'm sorry. I'm so full of the cool. People have spent forever trying to figure out what happened, essentially. Maybe I should put Will Hartnell in the background. He's my academic associate. He has a degree in cryogenics. So people spent forever trying to figure out what happened. And they're like, is it lead? Is it a giant magic polar bear like Dan Simmons thinks? By the way, don't read that book. I know some people like it, but I don't want to see the word platypus ever again. Um, so people have been trying to figure that out. They're like, obviously they went on this crazy death hike and they packed useless shit to go. They're like curtain rods and books and stuff and... It was bad. Uh, they went on this giant death hike. I've heard it called everything from like the death hike to the starvation hike to whatever. And they're like, yeah, they were trying to walk, pulling these things, these sledges with boats mounted on them, like totally man powered. Useless, right? They tried anyway, and they just die all the long way. And the Indians are like, dumb white boys, bruh, you are so stupid for even trying this in the first place. And they're like, wait, no, wait, no, just let us die man but they think they think there might be somebody who lived a gluka the man who takes long strides who was it is it crozier is it crazy irish man we don't know we don't even know if that's true i am past point of no return here so is he he's dead though <laughs> that was bad so anyway, people spend like their entire lives trying to figure this junk out, and it's crazy. The Franklin Expedition's dope to read about, but um, yeah, a TV show came out, The Terror. A bunch of people got really obsessed, including me. I'm sorry, I love it. So more people are into it, and I think that's gonna help foster a new generation of people who are like just as into this as me. So anyway, it's me, drunk, me talking about this. For the millionth time, and my mom just made fun of me before I even recorded this. I'm gonna go drink some water and lie down. This was not a good video. I love you.